Hello and welcome to 4-5's Design. My name's Jay and this is the first part of a five-step tutorial to show you step-by-step step how to crochet a realistic rose like this. The first part is going to be a tutorial to show you all the basic stitches that you need and the techniques that you would need to use to make this rose. The second part will be how to do the petals. The third part, how to do the sepals of the rows. The fourth will be the leaves. And the fifth, how to assemble the rows, including making the raindrops that you can see here on the leaves and petals of this rose. For each of those elements, I'm going to show you how to do a very basic um, rose so that you'll end up with something that looks like this. So using the very basic stitches, no um, fancy techniques at all, you can still end up with a really pretty little flower that would be ideal for a gift for someone. I'll then show you how to do alternative techniques like making a rosebud. Look how gorgeous that looks. And once you've got those basic techniques, you can branch out, you can do different colours and different styles of petals. This one here has got um, like a little wavy edge to it and it's slightly different colour. Obviously it's a, a, a teal green and you can even go really wacky if you wish using this lovely multicoloured yarn. So let's get started with the basics. <laughs> Because this is a long video, I've time stamped it. If you click in the description below, note the time of the section you're interested in, then you can fast forward to that section. You don't have to watch the whole of the video. Okay, I'm going to start with the very basics, and this is how to create a loop, how to then make a chain, and then finally in this section, how to join the ends of that chain with a slip stitch. I'm using this super chunky wool so I'm hoping you'll be able to see things more clearly and I'll attempt to zoom in so you can get a closer look. So here we go. First of all, take your wool, easy bit, wrap it around your finger twice. So you've got two pieces of wool on your finger. Take the back section move it over to the front that is easier than I've just made it look back section over the front again pull the little tail so that you've then got a little loop from that little loop all wonderful things can happen so let's start to do a chain into the loop goes your crocheting hook Pull the wool so that it's a little bit tighter than it was before but you don't want it to be too tight because you want to be able to work the yarn. So once you've got it on your crochet hook find a way to hold the yarn in a way that's comfortable for you and you want to hold the longer piece of yarn that's attached to your wool and to get the correct tension on it. You'll find your own way of doing this that's comfortable to you. I'll show you how I do it for me. I wrap it over my little finger and then my middle finger. So I'm holding the wool with my first finger and my thumb and then just to apply the tension I wrap the yarn around my little finger again. So I've then got quite a good tension on the yarn. It's important the tension if you want to get some nice even stitches. So 
here we go. I've got my yarn wrapped around my fingers. I've got the tension correct by wrapping it around my little finger. That feels comfortable to me, but you'll find your own style. So we're now going to make a chain. You start by moving your crocheting hook under the yarn, grabbing hold of it with a little hook and pulling through the loop that you've just made. So you've just done your first stitch. Show you again. Grab hold of the yarn by moving your hook underneath and pull it through the loop. You've now done two stitches. We'll go again. Under the yarn and pull it through. Now I can feel my wool coming undone so I'm just going to tighten my tension again. And the thing to, to do is to not be scared of stopping, gathering your thoughts. You're not in any rush with this, just take your time, get used to the feel of the yarn, get used to the feel of your hook and find a way that's comfortable for you. Let's have another go. Under the yarn, grabbing it with your hook and pulling it through that loop. And again, under the yarn, pulling it through that loop. And each time you do that, you're making a chain or a stitch. There's another one. And one more. Now, what I'd suggest if you've never done crocheting before is to practice this chain so that you then become familiar with the action of looping the yarn with the loop uh, with the hook through the loop and getting it so that it feels comfortable to you and you could do this bit without looking at it. This bit, if you're good at knitting, you're probably able to um, sit and knit and watch TV at the same time. You ought to be able to do this bit of crocheting in the same way. You're doing it mainly by feel. So as you can see there, I've got a lovely long chain, all those stitches on. And from that chain, you can do so many things. That will generally be the basis of every bit of crochet you're doing, this chain. For the rows that I'm going to be doing the full tutorial on, you use this chain to start with to make a magic ring, which I'll be showing you how to do later that you use for each petal and also the sepals and you use it to make um, the basis of the leaves. So that is an incredibly useful stitch to have. It's simple, it doesn't look terribly exciting but without that you won't be able to do a lot of other crocheting. So I might be labouring the point here but if you've never done crocheting before don't think you haven't achieved anything if you've mastered doing this chain. The other thing to not be scared about is making a mistake. If you find you make a mistake and you have to undo your piece of crocheting, so what? It's not an issue. Go back to where everything was okay again. Insert your crocheting hook and pick up where you left off. It's far better to undo, go back to where everything was correct and carry on than leave an error in your crocheting that might then look a bit wonky later on or it might um, make the pattern more difficult you'll know it's there even if anybody else doesn't now that's a basic chain I've said that that um, might not be terribly exciting um, but it is the basis for a lot of the crocheting that you'll be going to do and certainly we'll need it to make this rose just to give you an idea of um, some other yarn and the difference it makes in the type of yarn you use as to how your crochet will turn out. This is a ch chunky yarn, it's super chunky yarn, as you can see the thickness of it here. Normally you will use something like um, double knitting. This is actually a cotton, um, but the difference between the two chains is very noticeable. I use a smaller um, crocheting hook and a thinner yarn 
to produce a very thin chain and even thinner still this is a size one crocheting hook and just look at how delicate that chain is and this is the smallest hook that I'm aware of and, and that I've ever used this is a 0.6 millimeter hook and some silk yarn so if I just compare the two the super chunky yarn and that silk yarn with a basic chain you can see the difference between the two and all that is it's exactly the same technique it's just different size yarn and a different size crochet hook that's appropriate to that yarn and whilst I might be labouring the point at um, how useful chains are in crocheting just want to show another yarn entirely this is sari silk yarn so it's yarn made from guess what old sari silk and it is absolutely stunning this is is what it looks like when it's balled up i mean that's just beautiful to me anyway but just made into a simple chain in exactly the same way as we've just done with that super chunky yarn you can't see particularly that it is a chain but it because of the nature of the yarn but it is nonetheless and so what why is that so important what you're going to do with that well you can even make something interesting out of a chain i'll just show you something i've done previously this is a little flower made from a chain of sari silk i did a chain in the middle joined by a slip stitch that i'll show you in a moment did chains to form each of these loops gluing them in position and then added this lovely vintage button in the middle you can use that for decoration on whatever you'd like to or you can add something like this keyring um, device so to the back and use that as a little bag charm so from one basic crochet stitch the humble chain you can make something that's wonderful and pretty and useful so what I'm just going to show you next then is if I go back to where we were with this chain we've got that long chain a basic stitch in crocheting to produce that the other stitch that is useful is the slip stitch which joins those two ends of the chain together picking up where we left off you've got your chain in position and I want to join these two ends together so there's the end of, end of the chain can you see the first that was the loop that we made first of all and it's okay to use that as a chain so you insert your crochet hook straight into that get hold of your piece of yarn not the tail that we had there so get hold of your piece of yarn like we did making a chain yarn goes uh, your hook goes under the yarn and you pull it through that first loop and then the second loop that is a slip stitch and that has joined those two ends of the chain together so I'm now going to show you the main stitch that you'll be using when you're making the petals of the rose and you'll use this for the sepal and the leaves but you will use other stitches for that as well so because I'm from the UK I'm going to describe this using the UK name for stitches but I'll tell you what the US version is should you need to know that so the, so the main stitch that you'll be using for now on is the double crochet for USA um, friends it will be a single crochet but the technique you will be doing the same it's just a different name that's all so for the double crochet similar to making a chain 
and doing a slip stitch we're going to go into one of the chains we're picking up some yarn pulling that through if we'd have continued pulling that through we'd have had the slip stitch if you remember but to make the difference between the slip stitch and the double crochet Perhaps you can guess why it's called a double crochet because you've got these two loops on your hook. You wrap your yarn around your crochet hook and then pull that through those, that double loop. In case I didn't explain that very well, I'll show you again. In your stitch, your crochet hook goes into your stitch first. You grab your yarn and pull it through so that you've got a double loop situation. Hence why well, in the UK we call it a double crochet. Wrap yarn round the hook and pull it through both those loops. And that then forms your double crochet. Now, just something to bear in mind if you're working on a pattern, not these um, leaves for the rows that I'm showing you, very often the um, pattern will ask you to um, start off a double crochet having left two stitches spare. So in other words, you go into the third stitch when you're doing a double crochet. I'll just show you when I do two stitches why that would be. So these are two double crochets. There's the double loop on your knee and your hook. And the idea of leaving two chains before you um, start is so that those two chains that you haven't crocheted in form the first stitch in that row. So now that looks so we've done three stitches and we've actually only done two. So practice doing a double crochet or single crochet if you're from the US and you're more familiar with that terminology. That's your double crochet. You'll be using that a lot in order to make this rows. But if you're going to get into your crochet, it's a stitch you'll use a lot too for other projects and particularly if you're going to get into amigurumi which is the art of, of making small things this basic stitch is what you will use to make all sorts of cute little animals cacti, cupcakes if you look up on YouTube amigurumi you'll find loads and loads of videos about how to make amigurumi projects but that is the double crochet stitch that you need. I'll put that to one side now and we'll start again. And I'll show you how to make the next size of stitch up, which is the half treble crochet. I'll just show you a couple of petals here that have been made using that double crochet stitch. All of these rows here are just simply rows of double crochet stitches. There's a magic circle in the middle which is a chain and a particular technique that I'll be showing you shortly and each one of these little edges here is made by a double crochet increase which sounds complicated, it's not, it's two double crochets in the same stitch. But other than that, this little petal is made purely from single crochets. I'm showing you that because it isn't always as clear. This yarn here, which is absolutely beautiful, this is 100% silk yarn. And the difference with this, apart from the yarn itself being very fine, is um, I've used a wire round the edge um, to form the petal but similar to that other one you can see here the only stitch there 
for the most part of that petal is the double crochet. So you can do wonderful things with that double crochet stitch. Once you've mastered the double crochet, you may want to move on to the treble. This involves having three loops of yarn over your crochet hook, hence why it's called the treble. So you grab your yarn like you've done before, into your stitch, grab the yarn again and pull that through, and there's your three loops. What we're going to do next is to grab the yarn and go through just two of those loops first of all. So I'll do that now, grab your yarn, pull through the first two loops, grab the yarn again and pull through the final two loops. So you've still ended up with one loop over your crochet hook. Let's do that again slowly. Grab your hook, through the stitch, grab your hook, with your yarn I should say, with your hook. Go through the first of those two stitches. I'm just going to do that. I'll just do that again for you. So you take your yarn over through your stitch, yarn over your hook again. So you've now got three loops on your crocheting hook. Grab your yarn again and pull it through two loops. You're left with two loops on your hook. Grab your yarn again and pull it through the last two loops. I'll just show you that again. And remember what we're doing here. When I talk about a stitch, it's this chain at the top. It's that element of the stitch that we're going through. I hope you can see that there. So grab your yarn, you go through the hole, grab your yarn and pull it through giving you your treble. Layer of um, yarn over your crochet hook, yarn over through the first two loops, yarn over through the last two loops and you carry on like that along the row. Now we've done a double, we've done a treble, there's one more stitch that you need to know which is the one in between those two in terms of sizes. So double crochet would give you a smaller row, a treble a larger one and there is a stitch in between of those two called a half treble. In US crocheting terminology we'd be talking about a single crochet, a double crochet and a half double crochet. But sticking back to UK terminology, I'll do the half treble, similar to what we've just done. Yarn over, you go through your stitch, grab your yarn, so you've got your three loops like you did before, but this time instead of going through two stitches, uh, two loops, grabbing your yarn and going through another two, we're going to grab the yarn and go through all of those three loops at the same time. And because you're not doing that second yarn grab and going through, you get a smaller stitch. Here we go again, I've grabbed my yarn through the hole, grab my yarn again, I've got my three, I'm not going to just go through two, I'm going to grab my yarn and go through all the three and that gives you your half treble. Yarn over, through the hole, grab your yarn again till you've got your three loops, grab your yarn and go through all of those three loops in one fell swoop. So now you know how to do five basic crochet stitches, the chain, the slip stitch, double crochet, treble crochet and half treble. You'll need all those stitches to do the rows that I'm going to um, do the tutorials for. Um, using those stitches though there are a few other techniques that you'll need to use to bring your roses to life. The first of these is the increase stitch um, and you use this if you want to help keep your piece of crochet flat 
and you'll also use it if you want to shape your piece of crochet. So I'm going to do this for a double crochet. <clears throat> so that is our basic double crochet that we've just covered. If I want to increase the number of stitches on this row of double crochet stitches, all I simply do is to do two double crochets into the same stitch. How easy is that? So I'll just show you that again. That is our normal double crochet in that one stitch. Here's the next stitch along and I'm going to do a double crochet increase into that. So there's my first double crochet. Instead of going into the next stitch, I'm just going to simply go into the same stitch. I'll just complete this row now and then we'll check the number of stitches we've got and you also might begin to see, especially if I do another double crochet increase here, that the shape of this piece has changed slightly. So if you were to do that on every row, it definitely would start to shape up nicely. Can you see how it's got a, a bit of a curve on there already? And we have now got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve extra stitches. Now that was done using a double crochet. You do exactly the same technique for the treble crochet and the half treble and that is that you do two stitches, uh, two stitches in the same stitch of the row below. So if you do a, that's your normal treble, if you do that one first, and you double, I mean your, your treble crochet increase would be one treble in that stitch and go back into the same stitch to do that treble again. It's the same with a half treble. You do your normal half treble and then to do the half treble increase you do a half treble and then go back into the same stitch. Let me just release my yarn a little bit back into the same stitch to do that increase. I'm just going to go along this row now. I'll see you at the end of this row and then I'll show you the slightly more complicated technique of doing a decrease stitch. The easiest method is simply to miss a stitch. So going back to our double crochet, there's my double crochet stitch. If I wanted to decrease the number of stitches, instead of going into the next one, I could simply miss that stitch out and go to the next one. And there, instead of having three stitches there, I've now got two. I'll just show you that again. It's easy enough concept to understand. Miss one stitch and go into the next one. So if you're just starting out and, and what I'm going to show you next looks a bit more complicated, particularly when it comes to doing a decreasing stitch for half trebles and trebles, you may just want to start with skipping a stitch to begin with. The preferred way of doing a double crochet decrease is like this. Start as normal and get to your two loop stage but instead of finishing the stitch off go into the next stitch along and grab the yarn so you've now got three loops on your crochet hook and then finish the stitch off by going through all three. I'll just show that again. So start your double crochet as you normally would Instead of going through like you would to finish off the stitch, don't do that. Go into the next stitch, grab your yarn, so you've got three on now, three loops, and then complete that decrease stitch by going through the three of those loops. Now that isn't too bad. 
does get a little bit more tricky when you come to do a treble and a half treble, particularly tricky, I think. So we'll just show you now the treble decrease. Just get to the end of this row, turn round. There's my first treble. If I want to now do a treble decrease, I could, as we said with the double crochet, you could just skip a stitch and go into the next stitch along. But this is the way that is preferred for crochets, experienced crochets like ourselves. You do the first half of your treble crochet, leaving your two loops on your hook. Grab your yarn again and go into the next stitch. And then through the next two. So you've now got three loops on your hook. And then finish that off by going through all three. So there, similar to the double crochet decrease, you've gone from two stitches into one at the top. I'll just show you that again. Grab your loop through your hole so you've got your treble, beginnings of your treble there. Do the first half of the treble stitch going through the first two loops. Don't go through, complete the stitch by going through the last two. Go to the next stitch along, grab your yarn again, go through the first two, so you're now left with three loops on your hook, grab your yarn and go through all three. And that's a way of reducing it. You see by, by decreasing it we're beginning to create different shapes in our piece of crochet. Now the half treble, you can still do this missing a stitch, but there is a, a way of doing half treble in the same way as we've done the double and treble decrease. It is a little bit more complicated I think because you end up with a lot of loops on your um, crocheting hoop but here goes I'll show you how to do it start off as you would do normally with your half treble and ordinarily you would now complete that by grabbing the yarn and going through all of those three stitches for a decrease you don't do that grab your yarn again and go into the next stitch along pull your yarn through and you've now got a whole host of um, loops on your crocheting hook. Treat it like you would a half treble, grab your yarn and pull it through all of those loops. You can see what I mean about it being a little bit more tricky. I'll just show you that again. You start off your half treble, you finish it by going into the next stitch and going through all of those stitches in one go. So that is your increase and your decrease stitches. The next one is a favourite of mine and that's the wonderful magic ring. I'll show you how to do that. The magic ring is a way of getting um, a nice knit beginning on the petals that you're going to be creating. Can you see how neat and tidy that is there? I'll just zoom in a little bit. You can quite happily do a chain and a slip stitch, a chain of six stitches and a slip stitch and to make your um, beginning bit of your petal or the sepal. Um, but this is the way you do it if you wanted to do a magic ring and the idea is to have that little tight hole in the middle of the petal um, and it's nice and neat. So remember when we started off we did the loop which was twice round your finger. For the magic ring we're going to do twice round two fingers. You see? So we've now got three loops around two fingers. You take your crocheting hook underneath the first two, over the back one and pull that through so you've got a little loop and just complete that by taking yarn and going through that loop so you've got a, a stitch. 
I'll just show you that again when I first saw this. I think I had to replay the video several times before I got the hang of it. So I'm wrapping my yarn three times around two fingers, taking my hook underneath the first two pieces of yarn, grabbing the third piece and pulling it right through, twisting a little bit so I can get back to grab my yarn, grab the yarn and pull it through that loop so that you've got the beginnings of a stitch. And what we're going to do now is to create six stitches along this row here. So in this case, we're thinking of that as being um, perhaps like a chain um, or a row of stitches. Um, so instead of going into individual stitches, because we haven't got any here, we're going to go underneath that wall. So we're going to grab our yarn as if we were doing a double crochet, grab the yarn again and then come through. So that's stitch number one. Underneath that double yarn, grab the single yarn and pull it through. So you've got two loops. And then grab your yarn through that two loops. That's stitch two. Under again, bring your yarn up. And bring your yarn through again so we've now got one two three four stitches we'll just do two more in here now so under two over one grab yarn and go through two under two over one grab your yarn and go through two so we should have now starting there one two three four, five, six stitches. At this stage, just pull your yarn out a little bit and turn that over to the left. So you've now got your tail of yarn at the top. You've got that last loop left dangling down and that's your trailing yarn. And here you've got those two loops that you created when you wound the yarn over your fingers twice. Now one of those when you pull it, won't do anything at all, it's firm. The other one, when you pull it, will start to close that gap. And that's the bottom one in this case. So can you see what I'm doing? I'm pulling that one, it's whichever one gives way a little bit first, and that gap is closed up. If you then pull this top section, your little tail of yarn, pull that up and what you're left with there is the loop that we're going to be putting our crochet hook in now. That's the tail of the yarn, we'll keep that out of the way for now. And we've there got, we've therefore got six stitches, magic circle, magic ring, one, two, three, four, five, six, and we can complete that by going into that stitch and doing a slip stitch. See how it's closed up tightly? And we've got six stitches on. So that is the wonderful magic ring. The final technique I'm going to show you is a pico and it's not necessarily a, a separate stitch um, but the pico allows you to produce the final detail to both the petals and particularly the leaves so if you look at this leaf here I think you can see the edges of that leaf it's got those little nodules on it and it also has a little point at the end to make it look very much like a rose leaf and each one of those little nodules is a pico p-i-c-o-t and you can also use that same technique for your petals by adding a little detail either around the edge or at the point of that shaped petal relatively easy to do once you've 
had a go a couple of times, you'll soon get the hang of it, I'm sure. I'm just going to show you on this sort of basic piece of crocheting here. I'm going to do the picot in a double um, crochet. You can do it for a treble crochet or a half treble as well, just the same. So do your stitches normal. So in this case, I'm doing a double crochet. And can you see, that's the stitch we need to concentrate on next. The stitch we've just made, that little loop there of the stitch. We're going to do a chain one. And then we're going to go back into the top of that stitch we've just done. So it's this next bit's looking like a double crochet. Yarn over and then pull through those two loops. So we've created that little wobble. I'll show you what, just complete it by doing another double crochet. Can you see that little knobble we've created there? Just do that again for you. Do your double crochet as you would normally do. And then that's the stitch we're going to go in. I'll use this little stick here as a pointer. That's the stitch we're going to go in, the one we've just made. So you do a chain and you go back into that stitch. Grab your yarn as though you were doing a normal double crochet and pull that loop through and finish off then with another double crochet. So can you see we've made little points, little nobbles? And it's as easy as that. You can do exactly the same thing with a, a treble crochet or a half treble. So if I was going to do a treble crochet pico, you do your treble crochet stitch just as normal. Again, that's the stitch we're interested in, that one there. Chain one. And go back into that stitch. And complete that by yarn over and pulling through. So the size of your actual stitch, whether it's a, a double crochet, a treble or a half treble, doesn't matter. That's the way you could do your pico. Now you can do that um, with a double chain. So if I try, I'll just show this up to you on a um, a treble stitch, I'll just do that treble stitch first. You can do it with not just one but two chains and in this case you've got an option either to go back into that first stitch like we've just been doing or back into that first chain that we made. So that's if you go back into the first chain and I'll just complete that treble crochet so you can see what that looks like. Or, once you've done your treble crochet, you can get really adventurous here. Two chains, go back into the first of those two chains and then go back into that base stitch. So you've got a really fancy novel there. Oh, where are messes? Oops, just gonna finish that off like that. So as you can see, you can play around with these picots you can use them for any of the main stitches that we've been covering. You can do a single chain and you can do a double chain with either of those enhancements that I've shown you. And that's the Pico. Now you've learnt those basics, you'll be able to go ahead and learn how to crochet beautiful, realistic looking roses like this. See you in my next tutorial.